Does a British guy still work here? He went to Vegas for the weekend. Hi, uh, Ron. You wouldn't know where I could get something to go with all this juice, do you? Donuts, aisle four. I was actually hoping for something a little more euphoric. It's about people who are alive enough to make snap decisions. Let me see what I can do. Give me a number. Where did you learn how to shake that booty? There's like a, a consistency to all the characters in the film, which is the fact that when you're young, you can do really dumb things and get away with it. Stand by for picture. Ready? Here we go. There's going to be moving cars. Nobody walking in the street. Roll down, please. Columbia Pictures and Banner Entertainment present an edgy new comedy from three very different points of view. Starring an eclectic ensemble cast of today's most celebrated actors. In the first of our three stories, Sarah Pauly, Katie Holmes, and Nathan Bexton. Break was over four minutes ago. Play checkout clerks who pull a small-time drug deal with a menacing drug dealer played by Timothy Oliphant. At the very same time, Scott Wolf and Jay Moore are soap opera actors who have the terrible misfortune of being busted by a strange cop. There's people in here. Played by William Fickner in an unforgettable performance. Meanwhile, the real drug dealer, played by British newcomer Desmond Askew, is on a mad trip to Las Vegas with three of his friends, played by Tay Diggs, Breckin Meyer, and James Duvall. Yeah, man, I see black, because I know I am. See, color's a state of mind, Marcus. You know what, you're right. Thank you, Rhythm Nation. <laughs> Pardon me if I'm not in the holly jolly mood right now, all right? I'm getting evicted. Tomorrow. Rana is really short on rent. Since Simon, my dealer, is in Vegas, I decide to go over his head and go to his dealer, Todd Gaines. But it's an evolutionary leap. You're moving up the drug food chain without permission. It's just once. You shouldn't do this, Rana. I play Claire, and she's good friends with Rana, and uh, kind of the girl who, you know, she always does what her friend tells her to do. Oh, no, you're making me an accessory. Claire? That bracelet of mine you're wearing, that's an accessory. And they'll get caught in the, the worst situations, which all kids do. Are you a virgin? What? Answer the question, Claire. Oh. Breakfast Club, I get it. Very funny. She comes to me with the idea that she's going to sell some drugs, make some cash, and get out of her problem. You come here out of the blue, asking for 20 hits, just so happens 20 is the magic number where intent to sell becomes trafficking. And of course, what makes this story is it's not that simple. Everything all right? Fine. Hey, Rana. Todd. Our sales. My best mates are going to Las Vegas this weekend. If you take my shift, I can go with them. Everybody wins. His job description is, is getting everybody around him into trouble. It's his exuberance all the time. It just causes a chain reaction, basically, like a domino effect. Stand by for picture. Here we go, guys. Action. If one man in ten was having the sex that I'm having, there'd be no war. Um. We all just go to Vegas just to have a, a fun, you know, guy to guy to guy to guy trip. Uh, First stop is, of course, the 99 cent shrimp buffet, which would be uh, our undoing. See, I told you not to eat those shrimp, didn't I? We end up going to the strip bar. Hey, 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 easy, easy, Tiger. But I have no idea that, that Simon's going to react the way that he does. Hands! What did I tell you? We get in some trouble and, uh, to you. Madness and madness and madness. Hey, hey, we got 30 seconds to get up out of here. Before we know what's going on, we're in the car in a car chase with these two goombas from Vegas. how many high-priced lawyers you bring in. Eden Valley will never stand for your kind of scum. Adam and Zach are soap opera actors. You know, think they're sort of living, uh, living the life and seeing it all. And we get busted for uh, marijuana. And then Burke, the cop, 
makes us go undercover. Stand by, this is Victor. Roll down, please. Mark it. Action. Bert goes to Adam and Zach and says, ha, 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 you shouldn't do that. Now, you help me, and I'll, uh, I'll take care of this for you. Um, so we're clear on this. After today, whether or not you get something on this guy, Adam and I are finished, right? Charge it, drop. That, that's the deal, right? Well, it seems to me if the guy's so concerned about the legal process, how can we find himself getting busted for possession? Our situation goes from uncomfortable to bad to absolutely the world is ending as we know it. What does that smell like? CK1, right? Right? But it's not. We find out some things about Burke. He's a little twisted. I think that's safe to say. Well, Irene and I sort of had an ulterior motive for inviting you here tonight. He makes it sound sinister. It's not. I did do something terrifically unwholesome after that. A lot of the movie is spent really just kind of surviving this bizarre adventure that they get thrown into. where you think you know what's going to happen next, and it's usually exactly the opposite of what you think is going to happen.